YouTuber music is a term that you may have heard being thrown around on the internet, frequently used to describe YouTubers who attempt to make music, but they end up getting boxed in an image that people don't really take seriously within the larger music scene. Is it deserved? Most likely. I mean, when I say that term, what was the first thing that you thought about? It was probably something corny like the Paul Brothers, or Risegum, or KSI. But some YouTubers end up actually making good music, and they fully transform into musicians, and manage to escape the negative image of being a YouTuber that just happened to make shitty music. But before we get into it, I'm gonna lay down some rules. When I say YouTuber music, I don't mean artists that just uploaded a random video or a vlog 12 years ago, like Justin Bieber. That doesn't count. We're talking about YouTubers who had already established their careers on YouTube, then decided to pursue music, and actually succeeded in doing so. The first one on the list is Dream, with his song Mask, a symphony so deep and lyrics so meaningful, with tones of- Okay, I'm just kidding. Roll the actual list. Joji, George Miller, also known as Joji, also known as Filthy Frank, also known as Pink Guy, also known as Disaster Music, is a Japanese Australian singer, songwriter, and record producer, best known for his hits such as Slow Dancing in the Dark and Glimpse of Us. Joji started his internet journey in 2008 with his first YouTube channel, Disaster Music. George was a 16 year old high schooler living in Japan. He uploaded some sketches and parodies with his friends. And how were they? Well, these videos scream early internet. After a short life teen crisis, he transferred from goofy sketches to focus instead on urban music with the stage name MC Ruckus, tagging along with the group Beats and Misu, uploading the one and only video that I was able to find on the entire internet. You'll never know how that would have done because he decided to make a comeback to YouTube in 2011, three years later, at age 19, premiering the Filthy Friend character, which in his words, was the embodiment of everything a person should not be. While playing his Filthy Friend persona, he also introduced the Pink Guy character, which was, um... But often used that character to release music under his name. Pink Guy's music was most likely satirical, staying true to the nature of his YouTube channel. He continued to make satirical videos on his channel for a while, and his channel wasn't taking off until February of 2013, when his channel reached peak popularity because of this video, Do the Harlem Shake Original. With almost 70 million views, also during that time, he started adding more characters to the Filthy Frank show, or what fans called the Filthy Frank Universe. Universe is just an Asian guy with probably lung cancer trying to be edgy on YouTube. Yeah, well, believe it or not. Those videos include an entire storyline with its own lore and characters like Filthy Frank, Pink Guy, Red Dick, Chen Chen, Salamander Man, Fake Frank, and much more that it won't be too long to explain his channel's lore. Anyways, the more videos Frank made, the wilder it got and the more it got demonetized from YouTube. The fuck? You caught a one Mexican in six minutes? You're such a fucking loser! Because they did not like his over-the-top edgy content, so he made a move to a new channel, TV Filthy Frank. You would expect that starting from zero in a new channel would be hard even if you already had an existing fan base, but this only made his career take off even more, with his videos getting crazier and collabing with other popular creators like iDubbbz, MaxMofo, Anything for Views, and many more. And around that time, YouTube started taking a toll on George Miller's health, the person behind it all. That was when, for the first time, he attempted to quit Filthy Frank, and this is one of the first times people were able to see raw and filtered Joji. I have not been well the last couple months. Long story short, I was born with this, but I was recently diagnosed with a brain condition. Um, that, ironically, uh, gives me seizures. You know, I, this whole time, we thought it was so funny doing these fake seizures, and now, uh, some call it bad luck, some call it karma, but ironically, uh, boss. Hey boss, I have a seizure. Joji was trying to slow it down with the Filthy Frank stuff while also announcing his music and his vlogs channel. And the fans hated it, causing him to delete the video and act like it never existed. He realized the transformation from Filthy Frank and Pink Guy to Joji won't be as easy as he would want it to be. You can't just abandon your show and tell them to follow your other stuff. So he carefully crafted a plan to slowly transition to Joji over the next few years. He realized that the Filthy Frank show can't die yet and he needed to grow that fan base even more if he wanted people to take his music seriously, so he continued making content with his friends and making music under the Pink Guy persona. And during that time, he made some of the most disgusting videos that you will probably ever see on YouTube. And also around that time, he exploded in popularity, becoming the definition of counterculture because the content that he was making would, would never, never fly, fly on YouTube. Today. On YouTube today. But anyways, he released an album under Pink Guy named Pink Season, which was one of the biggest meme rap albums. There are good memes and there are bad memes. Why has God abandoned us? Oh. <laughs> Stop! What? 
But behind the scenes, Joji was planting little seeds here and there for his series music. He posted two songs, Tom and You Suck Charlie, on a secret SoundCloud account, but his fans quickly realized it was him. The two tracks consisted of lo-fi beats with soft vocals from Joji, which was the total opposite from Pink Guy's music. And most of the fans hated it, to the point where Joji had to disable the comments. He also signed with the label 88 Rising, which helped him with his music career by hosting live shows as Pink Guy and hosting Pink Party, which was pretty random, seeing Pink Guy in a room with Ski Mask, Wi-Fi's Funeral, and Lil Pump. At that time, George Miller was juggling two careers, with Pink Guy being more successful than Joji. But he knew that if he wants people to take his music seriously, he would have to get rid of Filthy Frank and Pink Guy for good. So he released his final video, making it official that Filthy Frank and Pink Guy were dead. And two months after, he released in tongues. But this time, he wasn't hiding it anymore. It was full-blown vocals and fully mixed and mastered songs from Joji, with emotional ballads and deep lyrics that nobody would have expected from him. And this time, people actually liked it. Then he went on to release Ballads 1, which is one of my favorite albums ever, and it got a lot of praise. The album is so good that I dedicated an entire video just for it. It's gonna be in the description. You can check it out after this video. Then he went on to release Nectar, which was also a commercial success, with songs like Run, You, Pretty Boy, Your Man, Like You Do. There's so many bangers on this album. I think there's songs on the album that doesn't really fit, but this album was still good. And two years later, he dropped Smithereens, which had mixed opinions, but it's undeniable that it was also a very successful album, with Glimpse of Us being the single that was released from the album, garnering almost 200 million views on YouTube alone. It's safe to say that he is the most successful musician who transitioned from being a YouTuber. Kodeka. Benjamin Lasky, or Ben, right. commonly acknowledged by his stage name, Kodeka, is also another artist that managed to escape the YouTuber image and is now a full-time musician, with a strong fan base and albums that are considered as masterpieces. Ben launched his YouTube channel in June of 2012 as Kodeka XA, originally started with uploading football-related content with trick shots and FIFA-related content at that time. With very slow growth but consistent uploads, he was slowly growing his fan base. After one year, he hit 2,000 subscribers and puberty as well, and eventually reaching 100,000 subscribers after four years of creating content, but just like Joji, he was showing signs of creative abilities with uploading raps on his YouTube channel with videos like destroying original rap as cool talent show while he was rapping over a J. Cole B to a very, very responsive audience. And at the end of the day, I'm the better man, freestyle my whole life that I never planned. I'm Benny Ben Benjamin, Selena Gomez has said, if you're ready, come get it, then everyone is jealous and many want to or my fastest rap ever. After more years of uploading FIFA content and some music related content, Kodeka was starting to get big in the FIFA community, but he was also releasing official albums on Spotify, with Work in Progress being his first album, released in 2015, which was just a badly mixed album with 15 year old Kodeka fast rapping on it. And the same thing applies for the next few albums. I think his sound started to improve a little bit on Bad Internet Rapper, but he still had some really thought provoking lyrics from that era, like on Daydreams when he said, I'm a go getter, I go get grades and get A's, and get laid, then wake up and get C's, but get Paid. This is like 15 year old Kodeka or in his single Dream Life where he said who makes history and takes limousines and virginities in Italy. <sighs> Quad, you, you did not. This is also around the time he started his Styles of Rap series where he would imitate other rappers and it got popular really quickly. Myself right now, bitch. That's actually how I found out about him. After Kodeka started making more connections in the YouTube space, KSI came on the What's Good podcast and had this to say about Kodeka. It's literally Kodeka, Bilu, everyone we've mentioned. I feel like so Kodeka thinks he's sicker than he actually is. But well, when he, he, actually, when he yeah. starts making original yeah. music, it's like, stop. All right? yeah. Nah, Stay nah. in your lane, bro. And Kodeka's gonna think he's better than you. Yeah, but please. Please, man, <laughs> don't get that shit on my face. <laughs> and then Kodeka saw it as a chance to prove himself, so he decided to respawn with a diss track that quickly blew up and got Kodeka a ton of respect in the rap game because the diss track itself was actually decent compared to a lot of other diss tracks from the era. And this is the era where every YouTuber and their mom made a diss track on someone. Then Kesai decided to diss him back and say this line, and if he ever played, I still beat you at a FIFA game, which inspired them to play a FIFA game. And Kodeka won, putting an end to the beef as Kodeka being the winner. After Kodeka reached peak status in the YouTube game, he tried to channel that attention into his real music, which was where we get into voice memos. An album that he released in 2019, this was one of his first major improvements in his music. In terms of trying to present actual art instead of just being rapidly spiritual lyrical, the album had some features like Sad Frosty, R.I.P., Velo, and... Dex. I would recommend listening to the album. Some songs were ass, I'm not gonna decry him, but some other songs were really beautiful, like A Dream I Can't Remember, Eyes, and These Days, with the lyric, Like a eulogy, I ain't making rap songs, yeah I come fast, but this music gonna last long. He was still making content including his 24 hour series, where he would go outside and pick a random stranger and put a big budget into producing them a song and turning them into a viral rapper, which was really entertaining, but also a wholesome series. Kodaka did also feel boxed in this YouTuber image, especially now that he's no 
known for his diss tracks. So he took a break, where he didn't release that much in 2020, but he started teasing his next album, From Me To You, with singles like Alone Together and Live Like This. Fast forward to March 30, 2021, the release date of From Me To You, which was a beautiful album and a huge artistic step up from critics, especially with Sisyphus, which had great production and a heavenly outro. Some songs were corny, like where did you go? I'm like, where'd you go? Oh, oh. God, as much as I love Kodeka, this song is one of the most skippable and insufferable songs I've ever heard in my life. But I would say for the rest of the album, it was really good. The album was about self-esteem and mental hardships that Kodeka was trying to overcome and he resembled them as mountains that he was trying to climb and overcome, which is the theme of the album. The album also came with an album movie showcasing different snowy scenes that matched the vibes of the album. At that point, Whitaker pretty much was over with the YouTube videos. He styled the Styles of Rap series, which is understandable, but he was working on a new album. He was working so hard on it to the point where it got unhealthy, and he was in the studio 16 hours a day, and he lost 40 pounds in the span of 6 months. And in Whitaker's own words, he wasn't doing good at that time, and the album that he was working on was I Didn't Mean to Hide. I don't know how to put this into words. This album was one of the most surreal albums I've ever heard in my life. I remember seeing the first trailer of I Didn't Mean to Haunt You, and I was immediately hooked. From this short video, you can just feel the atmosphere of the album. The story of the album is that Quirica, or the character that Quirica plays in the album, took his own life and is stuck in a limbo and watches his family slowly move on from his death and him trying to come with terms with it. It's a really beautiful album. That's why I made an entire video about it when it released, and it's one of my favorite videos that I've ever made. Anyways, a lot of people considered this album as album of the year, and people were really excited about about his next projects and at that point he was selling out shows and getting positive reviews from almost everyone and that's what i would say he successfully transitioned from a youtuber to a full-on musician his last project was crabby yard which was also close to being a 10 out of 10 album it had features with break ends and kevin abstract it's more of he was trying new styles and genres and exploring different topics but yeah i think kodaka came a long way in his musical career Dove. Dove is a YouTuber and a musician, but the only thing that differentiates him from Joji and Kurika is that he didn't abandon his YouTube for music. He makes the two and he tries to overcome the corny YouTube musician image. Alberto Ruiz, also known as Birdie, better known online as Dove, is a 22-year-old YouTuber known for his documentary-style videos on dark and morbid topics, but he also put out three albums and five EPs. But it all started when Dove created his channel on July 12, 2012. His earliest video can be dated back to July 11, 2013, titled Fake Car Crash, and he continued to upload random videos and just like me he started out with commentary rants and all that leafy shit then he started his series vlog or something and then in 2020 he tried blowing up with mr beast type content but it didn't work and he had spent all of his college money on youtube at that point but he realized that him and his family were starting to face financial challenges so he decided to lock in and study the algorithm he ended up blowing up in 2021 with morbid style documentaries slash video essays it even got the attention of moist critical and it ended up boosting his sub count he also made a troll video where he quote unquote smokes the edb pack in the location that youtuber EDP was caught trying to meet a, let's just say, cupcake, if you know you know, and it went viral, and he ended up remaking that video, but as usual, what people didn't know was that he made music, most of them are private, but a clip of his first song was showcased on his second channel, he used to play a character named Elfie, and would attempt to make meme rap with it, he would often use this character, because, hey, it's meme rap, you can't say it's bad, if the purpose of the song was to be bad in the first place, right, and how was the song you might ask, it was ass, this be my city, you know that shit litty, making up jokes and you know that I'm witty, fucking around and just sucking a titty, you said your house and you fat like you gibby, fast forward to early 2022, he started teasing single cherry soda with the help of gunners mixing and mastering and eventually dropped it on the 25th of february garnering almost 3 million plays on spotify and a million and a half views on the music video with different versions of the song and even an open verse allowing his fans to collaborate with him on his own song he shortly after released his first album ear candy and also his first ep ear candy lost files which is just songs that didn't make it into the album the album itself was it was nice you can clearly get the vibe that he was just starting with making music which nothing is wrong with that but i'm just saying and also the basic engine generic lyrics. I think the outro had the best lyrics and was the most emotional one out of the entire album. I also like Sugarfish, Overdose, Starburst, and Mars. But overall, it's not a bad album. It has some bangers, but just like Georgie's experience, people didn't like the album. They wanted him to stick with YouTube videos. Fast forward to 2023, Dove announced a new EP, which was a great improvement from Ear Candy, and it also featured Funeral on the song Cold, and I think it was a really good song. And the EP got more positive feedback than Ear Candy, and even some people acknowledged that Dove's music was hated just because he was a YouTuber. And then he released his first rock 
rock album, Stop Loving Me, and the songs were a lot more personal in that one. The album mostly consisted of free for profit beats, which nothing is wrong with that by the way, and the opinions were mixed on that one. Some people thought it was good and some other people thought it was bad. I personally thought it was alright, Buddy, Crooked Teeth, and Road Trip were really good. Then he released the Scurdy Cat EP. I don't have much to say about this one, but at that point he's been trying to build a music career since 2022 and people didn't really seem to like it. I think that opinion changed when Tov released his last three singles, which got a lot of positive reviews. And I think if Tov releases an album like that, it might take him out of the trenches of corny YouTuber music. <coughs> it's Future Me. He released his Dreamcatcher album and it was good. It's gotten way more positive reviews than Ear Candy and Stop Loving Me did, which is good to see. And as I said before, he didn't stop YouTube. He's doing both music and YouTube. And I would say that he is succeeding in music. Maybe not on a Joji or Critical level, but I think he's doing really good as an underground artist with a Thai community. I can see him as like a from me to you critic where oh shit he's actually doing something good but isn't fully there yet that was the end of this video i know there's more people like aries ddg and scarlord but i figured out that maybe we can put this on a part two because it would be too much to cover for this video let me know if you want a part two thank you for watching if you've made it this far don't forget to leave any form of engagement if you like the video and if you didn't well you watched it to the end bro is there anything else i want to say follow my instagram i guess all right see ya Scattered for it, then barely ever come back to me fast asleep. We both died so